Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Haven't done this in quite some time, but we're gonna do a team update on the God Squad. If you haven't been following me on Twitch or watching my streams, uh, you haven't really seen what my God Squad looks like right now, and I'm gonna go through all of the cards that I've got and the ones that I'm gonna chase. We're also gonna open up an X Factor Choice Pack live in this video. Something else I wanna talk about is if you've got a stacked team, what should you be doing to go towards the future, and what cards should you just avoid if you're not spending a ton of money in game, or if you don't have an absolute stack team what are the cards that you should go after so let me know if you like this video and if you want to see more videos like it maybe i can do an update every 10 days or so all right let's get into it let's go we need x factor connor mcdavid that's it that's it that's the only one we need here we go do we go in order do we go in order what one has mcdavid in it chat what one has mcdavid two i'm seeing two okay here we go show me connor mcdavid okay that's not it that is not it all right. People said three. People said three. Come on. We need Connor. We need Connor. McDavid, not Kyle Connor. <sighs> okay, it would be kind of fun to be able to do the Michigan, like my co-host, but uh, still not it. So, so far, it looks like we're doing a second X-Factor pack. Behind door number three, Connor McDavid. Welcome to the squad. Let's go! Let's go! What a call! Let's go, boys! Okay! Okay! There it is! We needed him! That was the only card we needed, and we've been blessed. Welcome to the squad, Connor McDavid. All right, guys, so here is the Lord Squadron. All right, obviously, this is going to be extremely stacked. This is the team that I have spent money on. I would not recommend doing that, but this is what I've ended up with, and now basically all I do with this team is play Hut Champs, a little bit of Rivals. I don't play any of the modes that I don't enjoy because I really have nothing else to grind for currently. I also want to address, if you have a team like this, and if you think it's just an insane amount of fun always, I mean, it is fun to have the best team, but there's really not anything else for me to chase, and it gets kind of boring, which is why spending money in this game is not advantageous to you, really. It's why I put all of my focus on my no money spent team, because I get a lot more fulfillment when I win and, and actually get cards out of it. So let's go through my lineup and the things that uh, I want to talk about in regards to each card. So we've got X-Factor McKinnon and the newly acquired X-Factor McDavid. These are the two, these are two of the four or maybe five X Factors that I would recommend you chase after, okay? I've talked about this quite a bit, that X Factors, they lose a ton of value as the year goes along because it becomes so expensive to actually upgrade them. There are a lot of them that will not receive, you know, Team of the Year cards, and if you don't know what Team of the Year is, essentially around January 1st, there will be cards for each position, or six in general, that are the best for the last calendar year. Now, if it works anything like NHL 22, you'll be able to trade in the highest rated version of that X Factors player. If that player has an X Factor like Connor McDavid, he is going to get a team of the year card no matter what. And if you trade that in with a little bit more of a, a cost to it, you will get the team of the year version of that card. It usually has more synergies. It's got the insane ability to match whatever the highest overall card that is released, meaning that you never have to pay for an upgrade all the way up to 99 with team of the year cards, which is why they're so valuable. So the X Factor versions of McDavid, as well as McKinnon, McKinnon isn't guaranteed a team of the year, but it's a strong option. I think that I have a feeling that they're going to go less of an individual position and more of just three forwards, two defensemen, and a goaltender. It just makes a little bit more sense to me. I think that if you go by shoehorning each position, because Matthews is a centerman and McDavid and McKinnon are both centermen, McDavid's just always going to be the team of the year card for center, and I think that that isn't all that great for marketing. I don't know. Well, I, I agree that I think McDavid is the best centerman, but it's just like something that I think that EA might move away from not to mention the very first year they did team of the year i believe in nhl 20 or 21 uh it was it wasn't position lock so that being said i've got mckinnon and mcdavid there's really not much else you can say about them they are insanely fast they are among the most fun cards to use uh and i would 1000 percent recommend getting them up to the highest rating now let's talk about mario lemieux so if you haven't watched my channel or you've been or you didn't see the video i did the icon trade and said i made the 60 base icons and i actually got mario lemieux and then i traded in for his 90s version version uh he is not worth 1.5 million guys that is what he's going for i would not trade in 
or buy enough of the base icons to try and get him because I just don't think the cost is there unless you have no one else to chase. So that's something I'm going to talk about in this video. This card is unbelievable. Mario Lemieux is one of the best cards in the game, and he will be that, but he is going to have a cost every single time that he goes in upgrades. For instance, to go from 89 to 90, it cost me three power-up collectibles, which is expensive, and he didn't go up speed at all. So keep that in mind, and that's just kind of an issue that you'll run into with these kinds of cards, but he is still one of the best, and if you have every other card, obviously chasing after Mario Lemieux is probably your next step, but I really don't think many cards in this game are worth 1.5 million coins. There are other other options that you can get that will be fine anyways he is still one of the best cards in the game all right moving on to my next line i've got mika zabinajad who just came out in the milestones event i'm trying him at wing uh on my no money spent team i have him at center i've played him a few games at center he's been very good down the middle but once i got mario lemieux to 90 i thought that he's got enough of a face-off rating bigger i want to try mika zabinajad on the wing with elite edges this is one of the most fun right-handed winger car or right-handed cards that you can get currently i 1000 percent recommend if you are someone who plays this game regularly because it only costs about 160,000 coins in value to get one of these cards to 89 Zabinijad is the one I would do and if you really want to grind your super against spending it on master set players I understand uh, you can get him or knock down the price with those milestone objectives but with gladiator and thief I think that's the thing that's underrated about this card you can actually get booming shot which I think is a little bit better these are two of the best synergies that are non-skating synergies he's got 90 speed 90 one acceleration he's six foot two the only ability i think is worth it is elite edges but you notice it elite edges is one of the best abilities and the thing about zimin jet is that you can put him multiple places in your lineup which i think is um you know adds value to him only Jokinen is a team builder that i mentioned that wasn't in the s tier when i did my ratings on uh only are on the team builder cards and i'm still okay with that the re the reason why he's so high in my lineup and that i think he is still valuable obviously is quick draw quick draw if you are someone who is very good at face-offs if you haven't watched my face-off video go watch it if you want if you know all of the face-off counters and you've got someone who's got 93 face-offs with quick draw you can almost win every single face-off and i think that will have some value that being said there will be centermen that pass him and i think that's why there are some of the other positions i think are a little bit more necessary but he's still an extremely good card we've got keith kachuk as well six foot two and has 90 speed with silver close quarters i have loved this has been one of my favorite cards early on he doesn't get knocked off the puck at all you can fire those uh far side snipes and with 82 faceoffs, you can actually play him at center too one of my favorite wingers uh currently in the game third line i've got owen nolan a lot of people he's been kind of polarizing some people have said they that he's played awful for them i like my or myself and some other people uh think that he's been great i think with gold close quarters on if you have him in your first line he is phenomenal like his ability to fire low far side collect those rebounds and hammer him home he has been great for me uh i don't think snipe and one t are particularly worth it snipe i think if you are someone who literally just fires for those low far side shots maybe i think on my no money spent team with pass or knack specifically I, I i might have noticed it but that might just be he has a good shot this is a really good card the one thing about team builders that um that that give them a big big advantage is they're almost all big and they have high body checking you knock and bump people off the puck very easy with these cards austin matthews of the 89 overall with his face off being bumped up this year uh to something that's actually usable i've loved him at center i've really really enjoyed this card he is one of the cards the x factor cards i would recommend upgrading and seeking out because i think he will get a team of the year and even if he doesn't he's six foot three centerman i, I just think that there's a lot of value there he's going to get a lot of good cards and he's been really good to use he's also someone that shot is better than what the stats indicate he feels like he has an over 99 shot uh so there is the austin matthews 89 overall and johnny Gaudreau, one of the cards that i think has surprised me early on in this game is the smaller guys with elite edges and high agility it's been so fun to just rip around uh be able to make those cuts left and right really quickly uh those deke moves i've really had a really fun time with these kinds of cards and johnny Gaudreau's spotlight card i took just to try him out and he is stuck in my lineup throughout so far and i don't know when he'll get knocked out maybe when i get the free tabo terra vining because i think it's a very similar card but tabo is a little bit bigger maybe then i move on from him but he's been great and then lastly we've got milan hey duke i have all eight team builders guys i'll talk about team builders in a little bit uh because there was nothing else to chase after i would not recommend making eights but if you can and it's you know you you've got the resources to do it you might as well because you're guaranteed to get all of the upgrades 
immediately throughout the rest of the year. Uh, I've talked about this. If you don't know what team builders do and what happens, eventually there will be a trade-in set where you trade in multiple 89s to get a 93 or a 94, whatever the overall is. And then you trade in multiple 93s. Uh, in a few months later, you can get the 96s and so forth. Uh, Milan, Milan Hayduk, I haven't really enjoyed. Even with Elite Edges, um, I, I've tried him out. He just doesn't feel exceptional. And a lot of people that have made him, that have him higher up in the lineup, haven't really noticed him either. I'm really not big on wasting wheels on someone with that that doesn't have exceptional speed either. I think it's a total waste. So Milan Hayduk there. Again, the only reason I made him is to make sure that I have all eight team builders. There's other cards I'd rather have. Tim Stutzel on my fourth line. Uh, the reason why I have him here is because it's fun. I think the the Evo event, the Fantasy Hockey event every year is my favorite event. This event, this year's event was kind of lame, extremely lame in terms of the cost and some of the player selections. However, I won't remove him from my lineup because A, I think he's kind of usable no matter what because of the speed and elite edges. And in game, he's felt pretty good. He also has Thief, which makes him pretty decent defensively. Uh, Thief is one of the best synergies in this game. Dangle City, not a huge fan of it all. I think it's one of the worst, but elite edges and the skating and everything else, you can have him in your lineup, which is why I said he's probably the one to make that's worth it. He also went up to 82 at the time of this recording. He scored last night, which is awesome because he's going to stay in my lineup no matter what. I'm going to make sure that he's on the fourth line no matter how good my team is because I just think that's the purpose of the event. And lastly, Dylan Larkin. I got his base card at launch of the game on the God Squad. He was so good that I went out and bought his X Factor card. I would never recommend buying X Factor cards, guys, uh, because he was so good. He's got elite edges and wheels. Um, again, I would use wheels on someone that has 93, 94 speed, but I think that there's other, even just elite edges is fine. Uh, he's got great synergies, amazing synergies. You can play him at center, you can play him on the wing, and his agility is just exceptional. I, I don't know what it is. He's so good. Um, I would have him higher in my lineup if I didn't have such good left-handed wingers. So uh, if you don't have, if you have this card, I would upgrade him because you don't need to go any further. Like the the, the thing about X Factor, because some of these middle tier X Factors like Stamco, Dylan Lark, and Barzal is they're not expensive to get to their 85 or 86, and you can just keep them there. You don't need to keep upgrading when the cost expands. You can just keep them there because they're usable for a very, very long time. So that is the forward core. Uh, loved it so far. I have a blast playing with these guys. There isn't really anyone else I'm chasing other than Gretzky. Like, Gretzky replacing Stutzla and maybe Tara Vinen replacing Goudreau is probably the only thing that I would do. Uh, I don't even have Jared McCann because I think I have three centers that I love and I'm not replacing, you know, McCann with Stutzla. So, uh, I think that McCann is a phenomenal card to go out and get, but unless you have, like, these three, that, that'd be the only situation where I would. On to the defense. Again, I have never been really, uh, a big promoter of using smaller defense on the back end because once you make division one you're playing a completely different game than everyone else and when you go up against guys that are just so good at handling the puck being able to bump them off is a necessity however this year i have loved kale mccarr his card is incredible i even have elite edges on him because at the point you can just walk through everyone uh, breaking the puck out with him is awesome he is one of the cards you should chase because his team of the year is automatic it's locked up signed sealed delivered he is going to get a team of the year card so if you keep upgrading to his highest overall when team of the comes out you can turn him in and then you never have to pay for an upgrade of your kale mccarr card just a great card next up i've got a bunch of team builders and you can mix and match these but i've liked fedora 2 a little bit just because of shutdown and truculence guys truculence is so impactful in this game even silver because you can nudge and bump anyone off the puck right now with it because no one has that really really large player that has exceptional balance like the only guys that you probably aren't even bumping off the puck is maybe tage thompson's prime time but i mean even still you're probably going to be able to shutdown is another really good ability early on because you can just poke everyone off the puck um there's a lot of defensemen that are faster and things like that but there's really no need because you know 89 speed is fast for this stage of the game on defense next pairing i've got larry murphy and steve duchene steve duchene is held up by his zone ability of stick him up and his shot he is able to walk in from the point and wrist or short side very easily loved his card so far larry murphy's been a little bit of a disappointment however he hits harder than his 85 body checking would indicate like i thought that you know his, his offensively he'd be really good and i think that when you compare offense between larry murphy and, and kale mccarr it's not even close kale mccarr is just far more noticeable however defensively larry murphy's underrated very very good card he just doesn't have any abilities that i think are worth activating and then the last pair i just made 
made Teppo Numenon. Uh, again, I don't think he's really worth making, but I did because I wanted to have all eights and get him out of the way. Shut down, stick him up for two ability points is the best bargain in this game. Uh, and then I've got the Fantasy Cam Fowler. This is tradable. I bought him for 650,000 coins. I might get rid of him. However, I think it's safe if you have him tradable because uh, he's got 90 speed. He's six foot two. He's usable right now. Like, this is fine. Even if you don't have a God Squad, he could be your first line left handed defenseman and be fine. If he scores one or two goals, he is going to fly up in value. Like, this is a million coin card with two more goals. So uh, that's why I've got him. Lastly, the only place I want uh, to make an upgrade is a net. And the only upgrade I'm going to make is the X Factor Jacob Markstrom. I only play champs in Division 2 rivals on this account guys in 28 games he is 22 and 6 with a 2.19 goals against and an 85 percent save percentage i have 14 wins and i have four games or three games to go in champs so i can get up to 17 so it's not like uh you know i've just been you know playing five or six games of champs like he has been so noticeable in net there is no other goaltender i'd rather have not patrick wad no one just get this base markstrom if you can't the only card i'm chasing after on my god squad is the x factor jacob markstrom now, in terms of cards that I'm chasing, like I mentioned, the only card really that, uh, you know, at this stage, if you have a team like this, is essentially the Edmonton Oilers Wayne Gretzky. And you have to get the, obviously, you have to get the LA Kings version, and then you can you can trade him in for the, uh, the Edmonton Oilers Wayne Gretzky. That is it. Unstoppable Force and Elite Edges is the best combo in this game. Like, that is the best zone ability combo you can get. And uh, his card is just looks phenomenal. Uh, he looks like a jacked up version of Kale McCarr, and uh, only he has Unstoppable Force too. So that's the only card I'm chasing right now, guys. There isn't really anyone else. OEL, maybe OEL would replace Fowler, but I like having fantasy cards in my lineup. I think that's the whole purpose of the event. I, I really enjoy that. And and that's it. And then baby, basically just Markstrom. The other one that I'm ha keeping my eye on is Roman Yossi's X Factor. I've talked about this a little bit, not because I think he's terribly good. At, you know, I think terribly worth it upgrading because I don't like his abilities. And he is getting kind of expensive for someone with only one skating um, synergy. Uh, but I think Roman Yossi will get a team of the year. I think that uh, he's going to edge out Hedman for team of the year. And if he does, that makes him exceptionally valuable to have his X-Factor upgraded. So I might just try and get Yossi... In, you know in a choice pack something like that i'm not gonna go out and buy him unless he hits like 200k um but I'm, I'm just keeping my eye out so if you guys have the four main ones uh mckinnon mcdavid mccarr and matthews if you have those four and you get roman yossi i try and i'd, I'd keep i choose him all right now i mentioned in this video we already saw the huge mcdavid poll on stream the other day that I would do an X-Factor trade instead, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I have some X-Factors that I'm no longer using. In fact, I need to actually downgrade one. Uh, and what I'm going to do is trade in, and I want to chase. This is going to sound nuts. We're going to try and get Yossi or Markstrom. Like, what's nuts about that? What's nuts about that is uh, just thinking that those are the ones we're going to try and chase, but that's how it's going to go. We're going to refund my Steven Stamkos all the way back down. Not that Steven Stamkos is a bad card. He's an absolutely electric one. And to be honest, he's better than Milan Hayduk. Like, I would rather have this card in there than Milan Hayduk. But since I've already got Milan Hayduk, I can get some value out of the Steven Stamkos. He is untradeable. So, um, you know, I, I can't really do anything with him. I'm not going to keep him. I don't think he's going to get team of the year, obviously. So we're going to go throw him into a set. And we're going to hope that we get either Yossi or Jacob Markstrom, which just sounds hilarious to think about. Uh, let me know if, uh, you know, what you guys think of the team. I'd love to, I'd love to hear your thoughts and, and what else you think. I should go after. I'm going to go ahead and throw him in there. All right, so here we go. We're trading in Fox, Stamkos, and Theodore for a shot at Jacob Markstrom or Roman Yossi. And even Roman Yossi, I don't want because I'm not going to use him. But I think it would be, you know, like I said, it's worth it to, to maybe have him just kind of, uh, you know, in your back pocket. Here we go. All right. A live, a live X Factor choice pack. The only other one that would be a solid pull would be Makar because my Makar is tradable. Mc, McDavid is not tradable. Matthews isn't tradable. Um, either is McKinnon. So here we go. We're hoping for Makar, I guess, for the coins, and then uh, and then Markstrom or Yossi. So behind door number one, we've got. Hillary Knight. Um, not really what I'm looking for. Just be, however, she it does go all the way up to 89 because of that. Maybe kind of fun to try. I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll see what the other options are. 
Kirill Kaprizov. All right, that's not it. I have no interest in Kirill Kaprizov, guys. I think that he is the perfect example of a card that's good. Don't get me wrong. But you're going to end up spending so much upgrading him in the 90s that you're not going to find it worth it. All right, so right now, I guess we're taking Hillary Knight. Last option here. Come on, show me Yossi Makar Markstrom. Let's go. Kendall Coin Schofield. Okay, so that is a pretty brutal pack. I won't lie. Man, she's really fast. I liked her base card with Elite Edges, but I'm not gonna upgrade. Like, he, she's not replacing Dylan Larkin. That's that's the real that's the real thing here, and I don't think that Hillary Knight would either. So, uh, we're just... Uh, we'll take Hillary Knight, and uh, we'll call her a day. Alright, guys, so that is gonna do it for the team update. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and some of the cards you think I, I should chase. Like, maybe there's someone else that I'm overlooking, but thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you next time.